And welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And I'm very pleased to be with you. We've got a lot of stuff that we've been talking about throughout the day. But there, there was a, an interesting conversation that I, I was reading over in the Daily Banter this morning. And uh, I started there. Uh, Tommy Christopher is going to be on our TV show tonight. And he's writing for them on a regular uh, basis now. And, but, I, but I saw this piece about uh, this guy who's basically kind of stalking Shepard Smith the Fox News host, who's one of the more rational voices over at Fox, and uh, apparently uh, at the correspondence dinners, the the comedian, I, I was not there, I didn't hear it, I was uh, on the West Coast, um, but uh, I've been to several of them in the past, but not this one, but apparently the the, the host made a, a, a joke that could be inferred as Lindsey Graham is in the closet, and this guy is all about Shepard Smith, and it's like, Shouldn't people, even people in the media, be able to have a private life? And I, I think that the conversation about the conversation is, an, is a really interesting one. And Shez Pazienza has been talking about that over the Daily Banter, uh, thedailybanter.com, and you know, with some very thoughtful pieces. And so I just wanted to open that conversation. Chez, welcome to the program. Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm well, and thank you for joining us. So, uh, give me the backstory here. Um, on Trotter, J.K. Trotter is a, a writer for Gawker who, since, uh, I want to say October of last year, has written something somewhere in the neighborhood of like four or five now uh, pieces, the, the sole intention of which is basically to out Shepard Smith. Um. And, uh, you know, from the beginning, I haven't really been able to figure out why, because, you know, just on, on the surface, someone's sexuality isn't really new, someone's sexual orientation. I think the point Trotter has been trying to make is that there's some sort of hypocrisy involved because Shep works for Fox News. Um, I disagree with that. I think that while, you know, Fox has its, you know, very obvious right-wing leanings, Shep has never said anything personally that's sort of anti-gay, um, but Trotter, you know, doesn't care. Trotter has been trying to, uh, trying to sort of, you know, um, make it known that, that Shep's gay, which, by the way, the worst kept secret in television news. Yeah. Seriously. So, yeah, yeah and, and let's... Known Shep for 20-something years. Yeah, and, the, and not unlike Anderson Cooper, and, you know, right. who, who finally just came out and said it, but... Um, uh, but that, you know, setting that aside, I mean, I, I, I have a lot of respect, actually, for Shepard Smith, and and, uh, and and I don't know him personally, I've never met him, but, um, you know, he, he seems like probably the, the one sane voice over at Fox News, and, um, you know, whether he's gay or straight, uh, you know, he's a, he's a decent journalist and a decent reporter, and that's, that's pretty important. Um, there, you know, th- there was this very loud debate, actually, a couple of years ago, we had we had on um, uh, several people who were involved in it, and uh, Dan Savage was sort of at the epicenter of it. Um, he was on our program a number of times about whether there is even an obligation of people in the gay community who know, you know, by the gay community who know somebody who is gay who is working against the gay community. And I think they were talking specifically about. Um, uh, largely legislators, Republican legislators, who who were voting in ways that were openly destructive, uh, all the way back to the Reagan era, you know, with the AIDS uh, meltdown debacle, and you know, to to the modern era, and and I think that you know that hypocrisy argument is actually a strong argument. But yeah, as, no, I, I think it is. I think it's. I think that if you are a policymaker and and you are gay. And you're you're keeping it a secret for the good of your uh, uh, your office, um, and you're creating policy, or you're being even if you're being a cultural figure that really stands sort of stridently against gay rights or gay issues. Then yeah, I, I would think that you you know I can't speak from experience for the gay community, but I would think that that would be uh, that would be a problem, and I think I'd be much less um, against the idea of just you know, randomly outing somebody, um, if that were the case. Right. And, and I, and I, and I, you know, I was, I really debated with myself and with my producers, with Sean and Louise, you know, whether we should even do this topic on the air, because, 
I don't want to be part of outing Shep, except for the fact that, as you said, it's the worst kept secret in television news. It's yeah. it's it's you know it's and 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 I but I but I do think that the my my I guess my question to you is um, is the subtext of what Mr. Trotter is doing by you know turning this into a crusade basically and stalking Shepard Smith is what he's doing really the homophobic stuff that's going on here or or uh, functionally I mean you know is he, is he doing something that that suggests somehow that there's something wrong with being gay uh, a or something wrong with being gay and wanting it not to be you know your principal public face or even wanting it to be in the closet about it um, I don't see anything wrong with that and and I and and I don't get you know the anyhow I your, your thoughts on that uh, well, I mean, I don't know Trotter personally, so I can't speak to what his, you know, in his heart or or whatever, what his, uh, you know, what his intentions are, what his motives are for this. Right. But he is kind of at first when he when he sort of tried to out Shep, he did it in this kind of skeevy roundabout way, which is he told this story about Shep going to get a drink at a bar in Manhattan and. Uh, getting into an argument with a waitress. And about halfway through the piece, it's like Shep was there with his, uh, you know, with this man, and they were canoodling in this. And it's like, all right, you you know, if, if you're going to do it, at least have the balls to do it. Don't yeah. be smarmy about it and try to, to make it look like that wasn't, you didn't bury the lead. Right. Because right. that really is, and again, he's followed it up again and again, with trying to make this into uh, a story. And, you know, and I, I said from the very beginning that it's not a story unless he can prove that Shep's, Shep being gay, or Shep's, I'm not even going to say gay or straight, Shep's sexual orientation has a bearing on his standing at work at Fox. Right. If he can prove that, then obviously there is a story there. Then it, then it becomes news. Um, and I think that this piece that he wrote last week where he talked about how Shep was essentially, sho as, as he put it, shoved back into the closet by Fox News. Yeah, that was um, the headline. He, yeah, the story was that Shep wanted to come out and that Ailes and Bill Shine and people like that didn't want Shep coming out, and that by Shep's pushing, he was demoted. He That's why right. he's on 3 p.m. now instead of in prime time, that kind of thing. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, if that's a true story, then it's one thing, but that story very, very quickly fell apart. I right, because Bill you know. Shine was not at the meeting that he claimed he was at, and right. know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and now and so, now Trotter's trying to backtrack and say, "Well, you know, we got that wrong, but hey, every other thing that we got is right." And he's continuing to do it by putting forward this is you know this is inside baseball, but he's doing it. He he's continuing to do it by putting forward, uh, um, you know, his quote unquote Fox News sources, and these are these are anonymous sources. Right. There are some news organizations journalistic organizations that can get away with putting anonymous sources out there. Gawker is not one of them. Right, which, which raises the question, to what extent is this just clickbait? You know, are they just doing this to get people to click through to the site? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, they got, you know, they got traction last week on that story from, from pretty decent, you know, journalists or people who follow media. I mean, one of the ways that I first found out about it wasn't through the actual Gawker link. It was the fact that the Daily Beast had written about it and Slate had written about it. Right. And I'm like, all right, well, look, you know what? I'm, I hate being, I can't stand the idea that, because it's the easiest, cheapest way to relieve yourself of journalistic responsibility while still getting clickbait is to do the, well, we're reporting on the controversy. Right. But it did get picked up enough to where I'm like, all right, look, I have no choice. I have to. Well, I think there's a story here about the morality of clickbait, you know? And, and, but we're, we're out of time. I, but, but, but we've opened the conversation, and I'd like to have the conversation be about what's going on at Gawker, not at Fox. Um, Shez, thanks a lot for being with us today. Thanks very much, Tom. I appreciate it. Hang on just a second. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Shez Pazienza. You can read his writings over at thedailybanter.com. Great work. Great reporting. Thank you, sir.